Question of the day, what is your favorite repackaged game? Now, I don't mean a reprint or anything like that. I mean a game that you remember distinctly playing as a kid, and yet now it's all of a sudden been remarketed, repackaged as a hobby game, which is what we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about a game called Wizard Thieves. You, in fact, are a wizard and or a thief, 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 in which you are trying to get special cards and treasures and blah, 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 such as that. The theme is not so much important. You are playing a card game in which you're flipping out cards face down away from you so that if there's a double, you slap the double. Starting to sound more familiar? Maybe a little bit of Egyptian war or it's more colorful terms. This is Wizard Thieves. Let's take a look how to play it right now. We'll come back up and talk final thoughts. Ah, uh, Wizard Thieves. You've played this game before. Wait, Brian, I've never played Wizard Thieves before. Well, trust me, because well, let me teach it and we'll see how you feel about it. Everybody gets cards with their own border style. It's a set of cards, which is going to be a certain amount of gemstone cards, some treasure cards, and then some magical item cards. The magical items are these items right here that do special powers when flipped up. On your turn, you're going to flip up a card. Now, let's just say the person is facing this way. You're gonna flip up a card facing the opponent like that, not facing you so you can get an advantage. And look, you flip it up face down here. Then you react to this card. This is a four treasure, which means you have four flips to get a treasure. And once you get a treasure, let's say it's a three, they would have three flips to get a treasure and vice versa and vice versa. The person who finally loses, loses that hand and all of the cards go to the winner of that hand. Then you have other things in here, such as gemstones. These are just cards like this that are gonna flip out and be worthless, but they're gonna to add to that stockpile. Here's the other thing you're looking for. You're looking for identical gemstones. So for instance, if we were to have played this, or let's see, I'll get it to happen out of here. If in the course of the game, this happens. Let's just say this is the hand, and then my next card that flips up is this. You then slap the card, whoever slaps it gets that card. If you can't really tell who slapped it, you check who's covering the most of the card. If you were to slap once when it wasn't a match, let's just say this happened and I was mistaken and I thought it was a slap, I would flip my head over to curse, which means your magical items no longer do any good, which means if I were to get this special item here, it wouldn't do any good. Then, if I did it again, I'm out of the game. The person who has the, all the cards at the end of the game wins the game. Yes. Now you see what I'm talking about. You've played this game before. So first and foremost, the box size, it's tiny. It's meant to be thrown in the back pocket and just played somewhere small and quickly. So we're not gonna knock it for that. What I am gonna knock it for is the shape of the cards. I hate square cards. I don't know why they had to be square. I, I don't understand that. They just feel weird and awkward in the hand. It's just normal. I mean, I guess it's faster to square up is the one benefit. I just don't like square cards. So uh, the art is what it is. I mean, it's it's jewels, which are kind of cute looking. and. Uh, uh, the one aspect I really like about the uh, art design is the individual shapes for the scaling around the edge of the cards. That, that looks good. I think that's a pretty good idea, too. And you can instantly distinguish which cards are my cards without the jewels having to be the same color. Then, let's talk mechanics. This is weird to me because it basically is Egyptian war, but with slightly different mechanics. I mean, just slightly different mechanics. I mean, you're still slapping doubles. You're still slapping sandwiches. You're still uh, getting penalized for slapping doubles. I mean, granted, when you slapped a double, it wasn't a double we played. I think you used to get punched or something like that. None of that here. You just lose cards or you potentially get knocked out of the game. And then you have the idea of you give somebody a challenge. Well, if you can get the treasure in four cards, you get to send it back to me or to someone else. All in all, it's Egyptian battle. You could play this game with a deck of cards, so I'm not sure why this came out. Like, I'm not sure why somebody said, hey, wouldn't it be great if we took this concept? This is always a struggle for me to figure out, okay, why did a game come to be? And in this case, I'm not so much sure that this one needed to be. And I know that sounds harsh, but again, it's a small game, not a huge production. So it's not like you shelled out uh, money for like a Gloomhaven or something like that. But it's still weird to me that a game like this already exists by playing with a deck of cards, and yet here's this version that you need to buy so that you can play Wizard Thieves. Is it different enough from Egyptian War? Well, no, not really. It's not. In fact, it, it feels less than almost because you're, yeah, okay, you get the special powers, right? So when you flip this up, it does something. You steal two cards, but 
Is that enough of a tweak to make it its own game? I'm not so sure. I know this sounds harsh. I don't like to do negative reviews. I'm not a big fan of them really, but they have to be done. And I want to be honest with you and tell you how I really feel. But that is Wizard Thieves. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. At Dice Tower Brian. Until next time, we'll see you.